Hey guys, and welcome to another classic unbox... kind... not really. I mean, I am going to open this package, but this is more so about the story behind it, and it has all to do with storage. Let's get to it. Wow, that's what it looked like a year ago? Welcome back to the channel. We're doing something a little different today. What you just saw was actually recorded a year ago. I have a couple of videos that I never got around to publishing. Some of them don't make as much sense anymore, so Present Me is here to give some commentary. Something I haven't done before. Let's try it out. In here is a Seagate Iron Wolf 8TB drive. These drives are designed for NAS purposes. For those who don't know, NAS is Network Attached Storage, which is usually a device or computer whose function is simply to manage your hard drives and have them appear on all the computers attached to your network. This is very useful when you need to access all your files in more than one computer at a time, especially if you don't want both computers to be on at the same time. And it's also very useful when using several hard drives because most towers don't even have that much room for that many hard drives. So usually they're dedicated units, they can be servers. For the most part, they're smaller units and yeah. There's only one in here, despite the fact that at some point I ordered three of them. Yeah, see, like I said, it's not, it's not that interesting. It's just at least I'm self aware. Box with the thing. This this is the interesting part. You see, I did not buy this. It actually doesn't say on here. <laughs> this is a replacement unit. I originally bought three of these on Black Friday. Two of them are still on my computer, but one of them I had to return. Now the return process was actually quite simple and straightforward. That's not what this is about. I want to talk to you guys about storage practices. See, if you're like me. Let me get this other way. Okay. See, if you're like me, storage is it's one of those things that you know you have to buy, like clothes and food and insurance. Y you get it. But because of it, you want to spend the least amount on it so that you have money for things that you don't really need. Like, I don't know, the latest camera or whatever. I think this is why a lot of people buy external drives and just have them everywhere around their desks when they run out of space. You mean like this? <laughs> what? I hate that. Okay, that's different. Some of them don't work. So my solution at first was to buy refurbished enterprise drives from eBay. There were two terabyte ones and I had them for two years, I think. Using Windows storage spaces, I was able to have some redundancy with parity. This is basically what a NAS unit does. Windows can do it in your own tower as well. Those drives never fail. I don't recommend you buying one and putting important stuff on them because they're refurbished and they're old, but I had a lot of luck with them. They're actually now sitting in Nadia's computer and still running fine, still with parity for some security. Now, when I finally ran out of space on those, I decided to upgrade to three of these, the Iron Wolf 8 terabyte drive that were for sale on Black Friday. Now, a couple months later, one of the drives failed and I had to return it. This is what's happening right now. And man, was I thankful that I bought three of them and not just one, because right now I could have gone away with buying one and just storing everything on it. I'm using about six terabytes in the RAID array, so I could have cheaped out. But that means that if I place the order at the exact time that I did now, I would have a one in three chances of getting this bad drive and losing everything. Thanks to the redundancy of RAID 5, it's just really annoying now. All I have to do now is pop this back in the computer and wait several days for the thing to rebuild. RAID is not perfect. Now, you might be wondering, why don't you just get a separate NAS unit? Uh, well, I think those are great solutions for a lot of people. I don't like them personally. Sure, they bridge the gap between having drives everywhere and a server unit, but I like the idea of having a server unit. I just want a separate network attached computer to handle all my storage in RAID. Okay, let me explain this a little bit. What I meant was I don't want a dedicated NAS unit, the ones you can get off the shelf, because they're not expandable. If you build your own server unit, they're much more expandable and you can add a lot of drives later. Most of the shelf ones are limited to about five or five to eight drives, I think. Some of them have more, some of them have less, but in general, they tend to be more expensive as well. And having to upgrade down the line, it means having to buy a new one completely. Also, I don't have more than one computer I need to access the data from. So an internal RAID array made, made a lot of sense for me and it still kind of does. But since I haven't gotten to that point yet, I'm running an internal RAID and this one's running through Intel Rapid Storage Technology. In any case, the whole point of this video is to tell you that you probably shouldn't have just drives everywhere. It's not safe. You want to have some sort of redundancy. I like RAID 5. You get some protection against one drive failure without having to double your cost by doing a complete separate backup. However, you should have a second backup. 
I don't, and that's bad. You might also be wondering what my thoughts are on the refurbished enterprise drive. Like I said, I had great luck with them, but your mileage may vary. And because of that, I can't really recommend them. I think that if you're on a budget and you want to have a secondary backup, refurbished enterprise drives are an option, but I will still set them up in a RAID array and have it as a secondary backup only. But wait a second, didn't you say you had your old array on Nadia's computer now? Yes, do as I say, not as I do. With that said, I think it's been more than five years now and those drives are still going strong. She has four of them and they're in RAID 5, but we've never had a problem with them and they're considerably slower than the new drives, but I mean, they work fine and, and they're super cheap online. Although a lot of the newer storage also is cheaper online nowadays. Uh, this is where this video is showing its age. Those are two terabyte drives and now you can find four terabyte ones new for a reasonable price. The great thing about having these new warranty drives is that if something happens like it happened to me, it's easy to just send them back and get the new one replaced. On the other hand, if you have the refurbished enterprise drives, you don't know when they're going to stop selling them and you're running a risk of when one drive fails, not having the backup and then needing to buy a whole nother array. And that could be more expensive. The point I was trying to make is the rate at which electronics tend to fail is usually they'll fail within an initial use period, uh, maybe a couple of months, or not at all for the expected life of the unit, which is usually a couple of years, depending on what you're buying. My first camera failed within the first day of, of getting it. And that's sort of the whole point of warranties. Usually if you can get through the warranty period, you're sort of good to go and they'll last a long time. But when it comes to storage, if you got a new drive, a single unit, and then you store all your data on it, and then it fails a month in after you've deleted everything on, your old backup, well, then you're kind of screwed. I'm not saying this happens all the time, but just be careful with it. Remember that electronics are more likely to fall in the beginning and just keep a second backup if that's the only one you're gonna have, which I really don't recommend, but I get it. I was doing that for several years and actually just a couple months ago, I moved to having a secondary backup, which is also uploaded into the cloud on a dedicated computer. My setup is really unconventional, but I'm actually using a MediaSonic um, hard drive enclosure for, three, for USB 3.1, that's with the 10 gigabit Per second uh, trans transfer speed. It can hold up to four drives and to me that seems plenty. And if you're looking for speed at 10 gigabytes per second you're you're maxing out two SSDs. But I have three mechanical drives in there so I haven't really seen a bottleneck in that sense. The other reason I got this unit instead of connecting them directly to the PC is because this is a fanless miniature PC. I was actually gonna do a video review about that as well but I, I didn't. Let me know if you're interested in that. Anyways, without getting into too much detail, uh, this computer is on 24 hours and it's set up to pull a backup from a main computer and then upload it to Google Drive overnight. Because upload speeds are not as fast as I would like them to be. I mean, I have Fiverr, but even then. And that's sort of the problem with cloud backups. If you're storing a lot of data, you really need a, a really, really robust internet connection, unless you're very selective with what you back up, but I want to have a backup of everything. So it's, it's painful. I'm using all that storage as a buffer for the upload and a secondary backup. However, on that one, I'm using RAID 0. So as soon as one of those drives fails, I would technically lose everything on it. But like I said, it's just a secondary backup and most of it's getting uploaded to the cloud anyways. So depending on when that happens, I wouldn't really lose too much. Uh, at most, I'd have to download a bunch of stuff from the cloud again, which would be a pain. But for me right now, this is the most cost effective way to do it. If I had unlimited money, that would be a server. Also with RAID backups, uh, more hard drives, more space. I would like to update my main storage as well. But all of that seems like a topic for another video. In any case, I'll leave you with this. This is just some footage I got again a year ago from when from when the, the RAID was degraded. You can actually see it says degrade on it and there's only two hard drives being detected. The other one was outside. I had sent it back. But rebuilding the RAID is as simple as adding the new hard drive and then setting it to rebuild, which for me, it took about 48 hours. Again, a pain and just another reason you probably want to have big RAID arrays in a separate unit. For me, it has to just leave the computer on for those 48 hours. You don't have to, but the storage is not as usable. Well, to building, it's really, really slow. If I wanted to get any work done, yes, I had to. All right, well, that concludes this video. I hope you guys liked the commentary from the present. And even though the video's a year old, it seemed really relevant to me. And this year, I wanna just not get bogged down and not publishing anything because I'm not so satisfied with it. So there you go. I hope you liked it and I'll see you guys next one. I have a couple more like this and then we'll, we'll get to some other projects. I have a lot of things in mind. We'll get there. See you guys next time.